just keep the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him in his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Those who are here and those who are joining us on the various social media platforms, today is Father's Day, and I want to wish all the fathers a happy and blessed day. It is good to be in the house of the Lord another time, to worship him in spirit and in truth, and to give him praises. He is truly deserving of our praises. And this morning, I encourage you to let nothing, nothing stop you from worshiping God. Let me hear the church say, praise the Lord. Praise let me hear the church say, Hey, hallelujah. hallelujah. Let me hear the church say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God is really, really deserving of all praises Amen. this morning. And this morning we are here to lift him up. Lift him up and praise him. At this moment, I will ask the praise team to lead us into prayer choruses. Will the church stand, please? Amen. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, I worship his holy name, sing like never, sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship his holy name, bless the Lord.
us shut out everything that is around us and let us feast and what God has to tell us. We are going to be asking him, we are going to be telling him. So let us just bow our hearts lower than our knees. Let us pray. Eternal God and most precious Father, today your humble servant is asked to stand in the gap. A gap, Lord, that I'm overly delighted to do. Because when I wake up in the morning, the first thing that comes to my mind is to say, thank you, Lord, I'm alive. And I feel yes, well enough to move about. Again. And so this morning, I join with my loving congregation. A family, Lord, Hallelujah. that I could not live without. Yes. A family that gives yes. me hope through your blood. And so righteous and most heavenly father, in a group, Lord, we just pour us, we just call out, we just shout out, thank you, Lord. Thank you for your many blessings, blessings that overflow like mighty sea. Lord, we want to thank you for your love to us. Eternal God, we also recognize that we are nowhere near worthy of this love. But God, when you left the splendor of heaven, you just did not know your destiny, but you came. And when, Lord, the pangs of pain and suffering came upon you, you said, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. And so you bore it all for us. And today, we bless your name. We thank you. We thank you for having taken us out to church or on the various platforms of social media. We thank you, Lord, that you have afforded us life, food on our table, clothes on our back, a place to shelter, warm, friendly family members. Lord, you have given us a community to live our lives so that others may see your good work and come to glorify you. Heavenly Father, as we look around in our community, and we look further into our country, and we look globally. Father God, this is not what you want. This is not what you expect from your children. And so this morning, I ask you as God that you will speak to our hearts another time. You will remove the hearts of stoniness, and you will give us hearts that is made of flesh, a heart that will be receptive to your words, a heart that will run and tell others about your glorious freedom. Freedom, many today can love you that they are not enslaved anymore. And so righteous God, we pray to you speak to the hearts of your people. Turn back the backsliders. Let them know that you love them with an everlasting love. And your love transcends Lord, from everlasting to everlasting. Father God, as we continue to worship you, we pray for the divine blessings upon the moderator, those on the choir, musicians, and us in the congregation. Help us, dear God, that we will be receptive to the words. The minister who will be in charge or the speaker we pray that you will conscientize her and we let our heart be receptive and we just don't leave it there but we go tell others we try in our very way various ways to bring a sense of recognition to your words so today lord i just continue we just continue to lift you up and Lord, if I fail to put anything up in four times, make up for us, Lord, as we continue to worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, we love you and we adore you and we continue today to bow before you. Take us through the day and let your hearts be blessed in a tremendous day. Amen. Let me hear the church say amen. 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 Please be seated. At this time, we'll have the welcome, which will be done by Sister Yvonne Alden. 
Good morning, everyone. It is my pleasure this morning to take this opportunity to say welcome to everyone who is here this morning to worship the Lord. Whether you're here for the first time, the second time, or the third time, I just want you to feel welcome. And I hope and trust that at the end of the day, your soul will be blessed. But fathers, it is your day today. You are special. You are so special. And I hope you are feeling really, really special. I just want to say a special, special welcome to all the fathers that are in the house this morning. At this time, I'll ask all your loved ones to cheer you on so you can feel so, so special. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This time we'll have the scripture reading, which will be done by Sister Navy Senior and Sister Shoshana Hyman. While they are coming, the scriptures are taken from 2 Samuel 7, verses 14 to 16, and Ephesians 6, verses 1 to 4, and Proverbs 13, verses 1 to 11. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. May God be pleased to add his richest blessings to the reading of his holy word. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> the first lesson is taken from 2 Samuel 7, verses 14 to 16. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chase him with the rod of men and the stripes of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart away from him, as I took him from Saul, whom I put away before thee. And thine house and thy kingdom shall be established forever. Before thee, thy throne shall be established forever. Ephesians 7, verses 14 to 16. Ephesians 6, verses 1 to 4. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them in, in, up in the nature and admonition of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Proverbs 13, verses 1 to 11. A wise son heareth his father's instruction, but a scorner heareth not rebuke. A man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth, but the soul of the transgressors shall eat boiling. He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life, but he that openeth wide his lips shall have destruction. The soul of the sluggard desireth and hath nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. A righteous man hateth lying, but a wicked man is loathsome and cometh to shame. Righteousness keepeth him that is upright in the way, but wickedness overthroweth the sinner. There is that maketh himself rich, yet has nothing. There is that maketh himself Speak properly, poor, yet has nothing. But the poor heareth not rebuke. The light of the righteous rejoiceth, but the lamp of the wicked shall be put. Gotness by vanity shall be diminished, but he that gathereth by labor shall be Here endeth a portion of God's holy word.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, church. This morning, I'm truly happy. Um, for those of you who do not know, even all of this, my sister, Kishona is my daughter, and Mavis is my mother. Amen. And I'm so proud this morning, the fact that God had spared our lives, saved our lives, and we're living to serve him because we know that there is no other God but him, and we have to serve him. There are times when the going gets rough, and we, believe, and we might think that God is not hearing us, but all he's asking this morning is that we have patience. Once we have patience, once we listen to him, we know that he will carry us through. This morning is not really a morning that I would want to stand here. But Pastor Bon has been asking me. And when I told him June, I didn't realize Father's Day was in June. And when I saw the, the Sunday, the 19th, it still never clicked. But after Mother's Day, and I said, when is Father's Day? When I looked and I saw the 19th, it's Father's Day. I said, my God, if I had known, I would have told him no another time. But God is good. That is why I didn't allow me to realize that the 19th would have been Father's Day. This month is eight months since we buried our father. So it is not easy to stand here because normally on a Sunday like this, I would be preparing his dinner. So when I read this morning and didn't, didn't have to prepare his meal, I was so sad. But because of God's goodness and his mercy, I can stand here this morning. Let me hear you say, God is good. God is good. God is good. Lift your hands and say, God is good. He has been good to all of us, whether we are sick, whether we have financial problems, whether we have family problems, whatever problems we might have this morning, God is able and he will deliver. All we have to do is just trust him and he will deliver. And as I stand here this morning, I ask that you pray for my family. I ask that you pray for Shamari. I ask that you pray for my brother, that the Lord will speak to them and not only speak to them, but deliver them because God God have a plan for all of us lives. And all we have to do is to accept him. Open our hearts and receive him. Yes. Lord, Lord, I just want to thank you. I, want, I just want to thank you for your goodness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At this time, we'll have the hymn 413 from worshiping song, Faith of Our Fathers, Living Still. I'll ask the praise and team to lead us. Thank you. Faith of our fathers living still in spite of dark, joy, fire, and sword. Oh, how our heart beat on with joy.
Praise the Lord. At this time, I'll ask Sister Deandra Dixon to come and read an open letter to God. Following Sister Dixon, I'll ask Governor James and A. Gordon to come with their tribute. Good morning. Good morning. Dear dads, everyone has a hero. Maybe it's a character in a novel, a historical figure, a celebrity, an entrepreneur. Sure, we have plenty of role models, but our true hero is you. From the beginning, in our best moments and our worst moments, you have been there guiding and protecting us. It is truly hard to sum up our feelings on a day like this. How can we thank you enough for your sacrifice Advice, patience, hard work, support, and love. Our appreciation for you goes back a long time. Growing up, you told us we could do anything we put our mind to. During our moments of self-doubt, you helped us to see that our qualities were not weaknesses, but strengths. You told us that we were special, worthy, and taught us to always put our best foot forward. You always expressed your pride and acceptance of us. Things children need to hear when they grow up facing so much pressure from peers or societal expectations. And we are so thankful for those words. But what's more important is that you didn't just tell us, you showed us. Your actions meant everything in the world and that is why you are our hero. On this Father's Day, our minds swirl with memories of large and simple moments and these treasures that flash before our eyes and fill our hearts with utter gratitude. How can we put all of our appreciation in one letter or sum it up in words? Simply put, you have given us a happy life, Dad, and we love you. You are our hero and we can't thank you enough. Love, your daughter or son, happy Father's Day. And now I would like to ask my father to stand as I sing this song to him. I keep finding voices in my mind that say I'm not enough. Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up. Am I more than just the sum of every high and every low? Remind me once again just who I am because I need to know. Ooh, and you say I am love. When I can feel things, you say I am strong. When I think I'm weak, and you say I am held. When I am falling short. When I don't belong, oh, you say I'm yours, and I believe, oh, I believe what you say to me. A dad is a person who is loving and kind, and often he knows what you have on your mind. He's someone who listens. A dad is a person who is loving and kind, and often he knows what you have on your mind. He's someone who listens, suggests, and defends. A dad can be one of your very best friends. He's part of your strengths, but when things go wrong, he is disappointed. A dad can be patient and helpful and strong. In all that you do, a dad's love plays a part. 
there's always a place for healing deep in your heart. And each year that passes, you are even more glad, more grateful and proud just to call him your dad. Thank you, dad, for listening and caring, for giving and sharing, but especially for just being you. Happy Father's Day to all. Good morning, everyone. Fathers are wonderful people who struggle daily to live up to his image as protector and provider and a hero of this scrimmage. And perhaps that is the reason we sometimes get the notion that fathers are not subject to things we call emotions. But if you look inside dad's heart where no one else can see, you'll find his sentimental and as soft as he can be but he's too busy every day. In the grueling race of life, he leaves the sentimental stuff to his partner and his wife. But fathers are just wonderful in a million different ways, and they merit loving compliments and accolades of praise. <clears throat> For the only reason dad aspires to fortune and success is to make his family proud of him and to bring them happiness. And like our heavenly father, he's our guardian and guide. Someone that we can that some, someone that we can count on to be always on our side. Happy Father's Day to all fathers and a special one to mine. At this time, I'll ask the praise team and brother Tyrone Thompson to lead us in two lively choruses. Will you please stand? Dance if you want to dance, jump if you want to jump, run if you want to run, whatever you have to do, but give God a praise. Jehovah, you I trust. Do you trust him this morning? Hallelujah. I pray that you will Hallelujah. trust him with your yes this morning. Because indeed, when we put our all, our faith and our trust in him, surely he will come through for us. Hallelujah. Jehovah, you I, I trust, trust in you. Oh Lord, Jehovah, you I trust in you. I believe, I believe you. I trust in you. Oh Lord, oh Lord, Jehovah, you. I trust in you. I believe, say, say.
my trouble. Who bites my pain? No. Yes. Who bites my pain? No. Ah, Who bites my trouble? Hallelujah. Goodbye, fear. Yes. You ain't welcome here. Yes. Goodbye, fear. Thank you your ain't welcome here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So
All in time is this oppressor. Good morning. You were the end of the beginning. One with God, the Lord most high. Your hidden glory in creation, now revealed in you, O oh Christ. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my what a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought to heaven. great your love was greater what could separate us now what, what a wonderful name it is what a wonderful name it is the name of jesus christ my king what a wonderful name name it is nothing compares to this what a wonderful name it is the name of jesus that could not hold you the veil told before for you your silence to boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring. The praise of your glory. You are raised to life again. What a beautiful You have no rival. <laughs> you have no equal. Now and forever, God, you reign. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the glory. Yours is the name above all names. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name. Name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing can stand to this. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. Beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. What a name of Jesus Christ for King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of, of Jesus. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. What a name of Jesus Christ for King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a 
few different names. Is it? At this time, we have the introduction of the speaker, which should be done by Sister Smythe. Good morning, church. John Richardson said there are three kinds of people. Those who make it happen, those who tell it happen, and those who wonder what happened. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my delight this morning to introduce to you one of those persons who makes things happen, our guest speaker, Mrs. Jacqueline Taylor-Brown. Mrs. Taylor-Brown embraces Frank A. Clark philosophical position that if you can find a path with no obstacles, it probably doesn't lead anywhere. As such, she serves as mentor to many, guiding them to see life and opportunity through new and improved lenses. She's willing to sacrifice time, energy, professional and skill if she can add value to a life. She supports the position taken by William Wordsworth that the best portion of a good man's life, sorry, the best portion of a good man's life is the little nameless, unremembered acts of kindness and love. This has resulted in our service at the primary, high and university levels where she empowers individuals towards academic excellence. Mrs. Taylor Brown has copped a number of awards, inclusive of Teach of the Year at the Frome Technical High School and the Northern Caribbean University. This wife and mother continues to mold the lives of children at the Frome Technical High School while conducting numerous workshops and seminars across the parish and beyond in support of teachers and students. She has occupied the chair of guest speaker and chairperson at several graduation and prize giving services for several years and has done so with wit and tremendous dynamism. Sharing with us today is someone who loves the youth. My Burn Savannah Church family, I present to you a mother, a teacher, a motivational speaker, a counselor, Mrs. Jacqueline Taylor Brown. At this time, we have a selection by Christy and Company. There will always be a special place in my life for you there. Thinking of my days at school, you thought of me and brought me food to eat. You taught me how to stand for what I believe and what is right. Help me know down deep inside, only your heart is deep as yours. I'm so glad to have a father like you. I would have learned to love like you. Now that you're here, those memories still live on. Thank you, Dad, for everything, for the good times that we shared. I'm going stronger because of you. You're the best among the rest. Thank you, Dad, for shaping my life. You pick me up when I am down. Dad, I want to say that I love you. I'm standing here today to testify. Oh, how much you care. Because of who you are, I sing the special song for you. Dad, you won in a billion most awesome blues, someone who cares. You never look for praises, you never complain when hardships around. Oh, you just go quietly working. Your words are very few. 
in times of storm that you always never For everything, for the good times that we share, I'm going stronger because of you. You're the best amongst the rest. Thank you, Dad, for shaping my life. You pick me up when I am down. That I want to say that I love you. Yeah, thank you, Dad, for everything. For the good times that we shared, I'm going stronger because of you. You're the best amongst the rest. Thank you, Dad, for shaping my life. You pick me up when I am down. That I want to say that I love you. Lord, I want to say that I Good day, church. This is Jordan Millis, the son of Dufton Millis, and I just want to use this opportunity to wish the fathers a happy Father's Day, and in particular, my father, Dufton Millis. Um, I am truly happy for all the things that he has done for me, um, except for the beatings. <laughs> but I am truly happy for the protection, the love, the care, the encouragement that he has given me what he has taught me. I am truly happy for all of that. Um, it could have been anyone, but God bless me with a father who I love because he has reciprocated that love to me as well. And I am so grateful for that. Um, I just pray that by the grace of God, all the fathers out there will just continue to be an inspiration to their children. I pray that you may enjoy your day today and that you may continue to just spend some quality time with the family. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers of you. Fathers play an important role in the life of this family. Fathers are called to be leaders and protectors of the family. They are God's example of love as we train these children in the ways of God. 
provides him with godly counsel and ensures that he brings correction, guidance, and love to his children and their mother. On this Father's Day, my prayer is for all fathers to return to the commission given in God's word. Fathers provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and instruction of the Lord. Psalms 103 verse 13 remind us, A father has compassion on all his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. Happy Father's Day to my dad, Joseph Foley, from my heart to your heart. Happy Father's Day to Reverend Loina Brown and to my dearest Uncle Barry. May you all have a blessed Father's Day on your special day. Happy Father's Day to all of our fathers. Hello guys, this is a very important day today. Today is Father's Day, the day where we show our appreciation to our fathers, showing them a little more love and a little more kindness and showing them how much we appreciate and adore them. I would like to take the time out to wish my father a happy Father's Day because without him, I wouldn't be the man that I am today. I wouldn't have the core values that I need to go through in life. So I want to say thank you, Dad. Thank you, Anthony Hines, my father, for keeping me safe and also growing me and nurturing me into the man that I am today. And also, I would like to say that my father has been a mom and also a dad. Let me explain. My father has been playing both roles because my mother has been overseas providing for the family. So I'd like to thank him for also playing the mother role sometimes. And I would like to wish all the fathers in the church a happy Father's Day and I hope that you enjoy your day and everything will be blessed for you. Happy Father's Day to all the amazing fathers out there. Daddy, happy Father's Day to you. Thank you for all you do for us. We love you, Grandad. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all the wonderful dads out there. And a special happy Father's Day to my amazing grandfather from your granddaughter, Amberly. And a happy Father's Day to all the dads of the Burn Savannah Nazarene Church. Special greetings going out to our spiritual father, Reverend Lionel Brown, and an extra special greeting to my own dad, Barrington Plummer. Thank you for always being a stand-up dad, amazing dad, a helpful dad, a loving dad. We love you. Happy Father's Day. Daddy, I have found my prince, but you will always be my king. No matter where I go in life, you will. Daddy, I have found my prince, but you will always be my king. No matter where I go in life, you will always. Daddy, I have found my prince, but you will always be my king. No matter where I go in life, you will always be my number one man. And Barrington Plummer, happy Father's Day. Pastor Brown, you are my second dad. Thank you for being my support and guide. I have never been afraid to come to you with any concerns that I have. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Learned our lessons through the tears, made memories we knew would never fade. One day my father, he told me, son, don't let it slip away. He took me in his arms, I heard him say. When you get older, you wild heart Happy Father's Day to all the fathers of Burn Savannah Church of Nazarene. When I think of my dad, I think of a man who is truly incomparable. You have given me the best things in life, your time, your care, your counsel and wisdom, and the greatest of all, your love. I'm truly grateful to have you in my life. You, Lionel Brown, are my hero. I pray God's continued blessing upon your life as I celebrate you today, dad. Love you. 
the quality of a father can be seen through the goals, dreams, and aspirations he sets not only for himself, but for his family. The heart of the father is a masterpiece of nature. Happy Father's Day, Dad. And I love you, and I wish I was there to celebrate with you, but we'll have many, many, many more Father's Day to come. Happy Father's Day. And also, Happy Father's Day to all the fathers in the Birds of the Church of the Nazarene. Hi, Daddy. Um, I hope this message catches you in the best of health. Uh, I just want to wish you a very splendid Father's Day. Right? I hope you continue to just be the wonderful person you are. I could go into a lot of the characteristics, the good characteristics that you possess. But I'm sure your audience and us, your sons, know and you yourself should know all of those positive lovely characteristics that you possess All right so i just want to say thanks for being there for us your sons for me in all situations all rough high and highs and lows and all of that All right and thanks for being there for your grandchildren as well All right well all all your grandchildren that you've received so far <laughs> yeah man all right so just continue to be the great person you are we love you i love you Daddy. Happy Father's Day to all. Daddy, I have found my prince, but you will always be my king. No matter where I go in life, you will always be my number one man, Barrington Plummer. Happy Father's Day. Pastor Brown, you are my second. Ask the hushers to come while Brother James will be singing for us. God spoke to me. Giving up shouldn't be. Sometimes the shovel gets so rough. But still, don't give up. Keep your head up high. Yeah. Although the wicked stand still. In a try. Remember that God is standing by to save you from the stormy night. God spoke to me because I take my troubles to Him. Don't give up, my child. Keep your head up high. Yeah. God spoke to me because I take my troubles to him. Don't worry yourself. Yeah. God is standing by. Oh, God spoke to me.
to me Sometimes the trouble seems so long Don't give up, my child Keep your head up high yeah. Remember God is standing by To save you from the stormy nights God spoke to me Because I take my troubles to him Don't worry yourself God spoke to me Don't worry yourself yeah. God is standing by God is standing by Amen Praise the Lord And our sister will in Mr. Austin Will the church please stand have a selection from the choir and the next voice you hear will be that of the speaker. Hallelujah. Father of the world, you are the light within me. God of all creation, living in my heart, I will praise you, Lord, regardless of your blessing, for you are worthy of my praise, Lord, just because you are, just because you are. Forever, Forever I will praise you, just because you are, I will glorify your name, just because you are, I lay my life before you, Father, I adore you, just because you are.
Good day, everyone. I have the great pleasure of being with family. The distinct pleasure of being, uh, maybe you don't count me as family, but I'm going to tell you why you're my family. <laughs> I'm going to tell you why. Well, I adopted your shepherd some years ago when I discovered that he's from Solas, <laughs> that he's brown. I, I don't know if he has adopted me, but I adopted him. I don't think Mrs. Brown knew about it, about the adoption. So let me let the church know that my grandmother is from Solas, Brown Yard. I've never met anybody from there except this gentleman and Mr. Matthias. So I just adopted them because they could not be Brown from Brown Yard and not be family. Sounds reasonable. And then since I came, came here, I've discovered that I have a number of children here. Yes, Mr. Essor right here. And Mr. Essor, make sure my photo looks good. <laughs> he is my Caribbean studies student. Also Tyrone. And then Zandrina and family took care of me. Zandrina was my daughter at Manning's many years ago. And there's so many other students. I saw some just walking in just now. Yes, Mrs. Mellis had Jordan at Froome, and so we've had a wonderful relationship. Ophelia, my student at UCC. <laughs> yes, and, and so you see what I'm talking about. I'm home. I'm home. I'm home. I'm home. <laughs> and of course, Mr. Brown and I shared, uh, Reverend Brown and I shared uh, um, on the school board at Froome as colleagues. Um, Mrs. Brown and I marking CXC for a number of years, traveling on the plane and chatting a few times, going to Trinidad and back. Ms. Hyman, my colleague, yes. And there are so many others whom I've come to recognize as members of this church just today. And I'm seeing you in a different light. It's good to see that Rev can sit and have others bless him. Isn't that so? I'm seeing SR not as a cadet and a great um, student, but as a videographer. Ophelia as a singer. Tyrone as a singer. The dynamics of God's people when they place themselves in the hands of God. Isn't that so? And by the way, I taught one of your sons at Manning's. So it's a beautiful thing. We must invest our talents, our means. Yes, Antoine and sister in God's business, enriching the lives of others so that others can come to know the loving, saving grace of Jesus Christ. Amen? amen. Yeah, man, I need to hear the amen, you know. We need to have a good time in the house of the Lord. And I might use this opportunity, too, to say, big up, dads. I ask permission to speak a little of the Jamaican parlance. Is that okay? Okay. So we are saying uh, the righteous man walks in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. And only a few got a chance to send their greetings. But enough of you getting greetings today, not true? The rice and peas and chicken are at home, not true? And we you know, pray something to stay long up here. Isn't that so? So that the pot not cool. All right. That's Proverbs 20 and verse 7. 
we also have learned from Proverbs uh, 22 and verse 6, direct your children, Father, onto the right path. And when they are older, they will not leave. And I guess some of us are saying, but they come in like they leave because there are some things they couldn't do in a yard, but we see them, I don't know. But we know that like the prodigal son, they shall return. We not hear the amen them. <laughs> we not believe that they may return, you know, and they might return. You know, we, we are declaring in the name of God amen. that they will return. They shall return. Amen. amen. And let me tell you, only God can be God. Because if some of us had the will, we would have given them some licks still. It's not so the big ones. <laughs> Indeed. And so it says uh, in Jeremiah 17 and verse 7, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. Praise the Lord. And today we look at the topic, marriage and everlasting bond. Let us pray. Loving eternal father, we thank you that you are God. And we ask now that you'll speak to your people. Speak to us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I must, since we are going live, acknowledge my own husband who chose to learn to be a good dad. Who chose to learn to be a good husband. Amen. And the reason I'm saying that is that nobody is born a husband. No one is born a father. And so... What we become over time, it's because of our choices. Amen? And so I recall as a young wife, I, I didn't grow up around my father. As a young wife, I tried to be dutiful. You know, my mother was very dutiful. I, I was not so dutiful as a daughter. But, but I learned a lot of things. And so I chose now to implement them at marriage. I wanted a home speak and span. I wanted everything in place so that when the visitors came, they could say, boy, you're on a good house, you know? But when my husband recognized that I was pregnant, he took on a different form. He recognized that as I became larger, <laughs> heavier, I might need some help. And I remember one day, Rev, he was on the phone. I overheard him calling um, his mom in St. Elizabeth and saying, mama, how you fix a can't pawn again? I suspect he never prepared it, but he enjoyed it. And he figured in himself that since me used to enjoy it, me go do it for a while. And he went down to Sav Market and he bought some dry corn, dried corn. And he boiled some water and I never knew how this was made, but he soaked it. And then he dried it and he grated it. Brethren, there are many of us whose husbands are doing well and we don't realize it. I, I don't think everybody heard that. We big up everybody else that we see looking dapper on the road, but we have not seen them in the kitchen. We big up the men who drive big vehicles, but we are not commending our men at home who are doing big things, but they seem like small things. So big up our shepherd. Big up the fathers who have been there with the their children, making sure that they stand by their wives, stand by their children, stand by their women, because we know some are not married. And just thank God that you keep the pillars of marriage, the pillars of your relationship alive. Mark 10, 9 says, therefore, what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Serious words, you know, that is declared in the word of God. So when Mary comes and says, my girl, you're still with that demand, eh? what shall you say? Huh? You declare the word of the, God, the Lord over your marriage. Let no woman put asunder. Let no mother-in-law put asunder. Isn't that so? In the name of Jesus. And if you notice the ring, all right, if you notice the ring, uh, it, she will click to that. That slide shortly. It's a circle. It's complete. I, I don't recall seeing a broken marriage ring or one with a split in it. It's complete and it keeps going around and around. And except there is a point where there's a diamond, you don't know where it starts or where it ends. That's what it is saying to us. 
it's suggesting to us that as married couples, no matter what happens, we stick together. Isn't that so? We stick together. I, I recall a situation when I was a child that there was a family next door and the couple had a challenge feeding their first child. The reason for that is that she never liked what they prepared. So she told herself, very small child. And Sophia would refuse their meal every time, no matter what they prepared. So my mother and her parents made a plot to send the basin with the rice and peas and chicken over the fence at the back of the house so Sophie wouldn't see. And then they would send Sophie over and Sophie would have everything from her own basin from the, her pot on the stove. Are you getting the point? Sometimes we look for what we already have in other places. No, I, I'm not hearing your responses. Sometimes we look for what we already have in other places, not realizing that we are partaking of what's already ours. In other words, be careful what you seek for because in not in every case you'll get what you look for. Are we together? Yeah. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. That's a blueprint. That's a blueprint, isn't that so? And we could flip it. Couldn't we flip it? Wives, love your husbands as Christ loved the church and did what? Gave himself. Because it's not a one-sided coin. Isn't that so? And that is Ephesians 5, 25. Proverbs 3, 3 to 4. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your wear, your neck. Yes? Write them on the table or the tablet of the heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God. God. Husbands and wives must be faithful. I recall hearing a gentleman saying that he quite appreciates various women. Want to do the nails, want to do the hair, want to do the massage, another for the sexual treats, and so forth and so on. In other words, he's suggesting that none is complete. Isn't that so? So to the lady who he enjoys, who does his hair, she's, that's, that's what she's for, just to do his hair. What, what happens when the day comes when she can't? Will she be useful still? Not at all. And you can add the other parts to it. And so we must make what we have work. Add the spice to our marriage. And maybe the wife will have to learn to do the hair if that's what he wants. To do the nails if that's what he wants. Or he might have to appreciate that she's better at the hair and not so much at the nails. So do the nails want it? Do you do your nails? It's okay. Take up the file learn to do it yourself is that so and if then if she's willing to do your nails will you do her nails too or your nails are better than her nails things to think about is that so food for thought so in other words what you like for you do it to her let her enjoy too and vice versa so first corinthians 13 and verse 2 this is the love passage if I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries, sound profound, not true, and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not love, do not have love, I am what? Nothing. Nothing. That's the word of the Lord. Worthless in your relationships. And our children are watching. They have enough to guide them based on our relationship. Isn't that so? Oh, the son is saying, okay, so daddy treat mommy. Okay, so I'm going to treat my girl when we get her. And we can flip that coin. And so we are saying, teach the youths right. By way, 
not only of our what messages or verbal messages but our what? sermons that we preach by our lifestyle amen it would make no sense and i see sis, sister brown drawing closely see a bond there isn't that so one is not at the back and one at the front and she has a cup on him too <laughs> yes what would it make sense if reverend comes here every day and speaks so profoundly from the word of god and brethren are shouting hallelujah and when they go home it's licks and boxes and kicks what would god say of the man because in the end it's not the measurement that the brethren give is a measurement that god gives amen let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear it. Ephesians 4, 29. Now, another uh, version, another text, 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 9, puts it this way. Love is patient. Hmm. A lot of us like to walk out and we spend the night somewhere else. As we can't bother. It does not envy. Oh, I missed out. Love is kind. Thank you, Rev. So love is patient. Love is kind. It's not envious. It does not boast. And some of us like to list the things that we have done in the relationship. I think I know, may I do this? I may spend the most money. My paycheck is bigger than yours. And if I never for me, you wouldn't reach where you are. Love does not boast or it's not love. I, I, it's arrogance, not love. And by the way, love, love is not of man. Love is of God. So love is divine. Love is divine. And so when we fail, we must go to the, the divine one to help refill us and refuel us, revitalize us so that we can be better for our relationships. Yes? And while I'm at this, I can say to parents as well, it fits in here too, that our Parent-child relationships must mirror this uh, blueprint. Are you with me? Yes, yes man. Love is not proud. It do does not dishonor others. Yes, and so there are some persons, starting from school days, where some young men start to tell what they did with the young lady and things about her and their videos going around. It starts from we are young and we dishonor our women, our girlfriends. Yes, and I think some of us start too young. We're not ready for this thing yet. And it taints our judgment of things. And it's our peers who are guiding us. And so I say to fathers, take your boy under your hands. And guide him. Teach him a right. And listen, don't teach him from the mistakes you made. Teach him because of the mistakes you've made. So from what? Because remember, we are not born that way. So we are learning. And we know we made mistakes. Say sorry to your wife. And the wife is saying sorry to you too. Isn't that so? And they say, son, I made some mistakes. Don't walk the same path. Daughter, I made some mistakes. Don't walk the same path. It keeps no record of wrongs. Many arguments are filled with records. Not even the manuscripts of heaven have so many records. The book of life doesn't. And so in that argument, we throw stones that are literal records. You remember last year, this time, you never even wish me father, happy Father's Day. You remember where you were last year, this time? And the argument starts. What should have been a good Father's Day? With everybody sitting at the table, giving laugh a pea soup. Kin tita, kiba heart bun. In Instead of that, we're arguing over frivolities, foolishness, foolishness. God is not pleased. The family should be together, praying, uh, convening for a meal, calling grandpa and everybody. And I say, Papa, happy Father's Day. You're all right. You have something to eat. We have come down there later. Does that make sense? And so we are saying to us, I'm saying to all of us, myself included, let's break down those walls of partition. 
And don't measure your relationship of the neighbors. So you might not be driving, but the neighbor is. And you're going to say to your husband, imagine, Job by a wife car. And all now I'm near to retirement, I'm still a walk. What are you going to do about it? So you're putting Job in a position now to scam. And do everything wrong to bring in what does not belong to him that you're going to claim as yours. And go brag Sunday morning in a church. Say, my girl, you know, say, come out here so let me show you the thing. My girl, let me this. You know, sister, me roll out. Yes? Not good at all. Let the man remain honest and appreciate his honest earnings. Men's egos can be crushed. Yes? It can be crushed. And some of us will say, chum and blow that. We are ball over. We that for ball over. We never like to see man cry. That's not good. We must fet and pet our men. They are deserving of it. Now, there are some relationships in which we have the teacher type of relationship. And in that relationship, we have, let's see now, the teacher is always giving instructions. You went to school, right? You remember some of those instructions you got at school? And for those who are still at school, sit down. If you move to them, you. Right off the work of the board. Instruction. So we enter into our relationships giving instructions. Dear, clean out the patio. Dear, make sure, say, dear, and we give instructions. That's not how a relationship should be. You might give reminders because sometimes we need reminders. Isn't that so? But I'm not married to my teacher, nor am I my, my, my spouse's student. It's a relationship. It's a give and take relationship. Isn't that so? So it's not a case where you get up and say, do this, do that, go there, go, come here. No. Some have a police officer relationship. Isn't that so? Yes, man. They don't observe the law, but they lay down the law. I'm Mironia. So I'm me the man in here. So and I'm Miron things, things not around me. Am I okay? Right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And so it, it makes children jittery. The car drives in and everybody on P's and Q's. The children who are playing get up, go, um, they run away. Uh, uh, and they're frightened. They're frightened by his presence. So also the wife, she doesn't stop talking. She talks, she talks, she nags like, the Bible says, like the rain on the roof, going pitter, patter, pitter, last year, last month, last week, pitter, patter. Annoying. Very, very, very annoying. Amen. So if we're going to lay down the law, we must live by the law and be willing to have some laws laid down for us too. Isn't that so? Absolutely. What about the nurse? <laughs> The nurse type of relationship. Give the medicine, but she not take it. Yes, man. Ever ask a nurse if she's feeling sick? She's not going to doctor. Well, let me say med medical professionals in general. And so that's why many of them perhaps have not even, well, let me not go into that. Might be a little bit political. Le let's leave that one alone. Ah, there we go, sis. Some of us marry scammers. And I'm not only talking about those with the lead sheets and the cell phones. I'm talking about those who are always taking, but never giving. It was my birthday, but, but I didn't get anything. No recognition, nothing. But what have you given? What have you established as the order in the home? Has there been a give and take relationship? A win-win relationship? Or is it always gimme, gimme, gimme? Something to think about. But I encourage us <laughs> to have an investor relationship where we are always depositing. Always depositing. Because guess what? Anytime you deposit, your must can make a withdrawal. Not true. Why are you withdrawing from what, what you have not? By the way, if you have a business arrangement with the bank, Let's say it's a credit card you have. 
or a checking account. When you take more than you have, what is it called? An overdraft. In other words, you owe the bank money now. Holy for money. So in a relationship, when you have taken more than you have given, you're in overdraft. You're draining the relationship of what you did not put in. In other words, one party is giving more than the other is. And so when the person reaches a burnout stage, some of us wonder, oh, I'll go on in here, so I never saw you used to stay. So build up an account. And we we always say prayer account gives plenty. And let's look at the God church relationship. God is always giving. You know, when we give, when we think something is going wrong, many of us, not, not, not all of us, Lord, I'm going to put on a big offering today because I need a Lexus. Okay. Lexus is still in style? Uh, okay. Um, you see what I'm saying? I, I want a Lamborghini. So, Audi. So you understand what I'm saying? Lord, I'm praying today for an Audi in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Isn't that so? And I'm going to drop a large offering today, Lord. Observe what I'm putting in the offering plate because I need a return on my investment. No, that's not God. We don't use God. We might use our husbands. <laughs> we might use our spouses, but we can't use God. Amen? Well, I'm not hearing enough amen, but I, I believe what I'm saying. I believe what I'm saying. I tell you, a lady told me a story once. She said her child uh, hurt someone one day, an older ch child. And she said to herself, Lord, this is a terrible thing. And she said she ran to the school after she heard the news that her child hurt the other one. And she, she said, oh my God, where is the mother? Where's the mother? Where's the mother of this child? And she said, mother, I'm so sorry. Whatever it will take to repair the damage, I will do it. And the mother said to her, it's okay. They're all ch children. Don't worry about it. Fear not. It could have been my child who hurt your child. And she started to scratch her head and said, where did this come from? Why would a mother be so kind to me? And then the Lord brought back to her memory. Years before, when a little boy broke her son's foot or caused her son's foot to be broken, she had a lot to spend. The child spent a lot of time in the hospital. And she remember comforting that mother at that time and said, Mom, do not feel too badly. They're all children. She said, Mrs. Brown, because I invested, because I deposited forgiveness, love, patience, and tenderness years before, I was now reaping. I was now withdrawing. And I'm saying to us, you can't withdraw what you don't put on, else it's coming in the name of Jesus. I, I realize many of us will get up and we'll say, I rise and share this day with you, O oh God. I praise you for the light of dawn. I carry your hope of life within me, my Savior and my beloved. Let's switch around the words a little bit. And we are talking to our spouses now. And, and we'll say, dear, I rise and I share this day with you. I praise you, honey, for the light you bring into our lives. Mm, lyrics, not true. And lyrics turn up, not true. Mercy. I carry you. Now, I'm married 26 years. 26. Can you imagine? 26 years, sir. <laughs> 26 years of turning. And I tell you, you know, don't rush into relationships. Marry the person you have talked to the Lord about. Young people, I'm not talking to those who are married already, you know. Make that work. <laughs> Stay in it and make it work. Fix up yourselves for each other. But the little ones know who, who seem to think that things are running away. Or the little ones who think, you know, I want to know more about how to prepare myself. The first place you go is to the Lord. The next place you go is to your parents. You may be afraid to say something. So some of us are very unapproachable, you know. Oh, you're a ton of man. At them, the things that depend on your mind. So then they'll find someone else to talk to. And you're not going to want to know them over here. So make yourselves have the conversation. So parents need to be praying too. To have 
God ready their hearts for the day when you start to see little signs. And maybe some of us should not wait until they come to us and say certain things. We might have to say, Samantha, come here, honey. We need to talk. How are you doing? Is anybody you like? Huh? Isn't that okay? I mean, after they reach 12, 13, you know, they start to admire. Uh, by the way, do you think I, I, I'm 20, married 26. Do you think there's anybody I admire apart from my husband? You don't think any other good looking man out there? You don't think any other hardworking men out there? Oh, okay. It's just for me to know that Mr. Brown is my husband. Yes. Of course, there are many men I admire Reverend Brown. And today I learned to admire Mr. Spikel, a gentleman. I, I came here in style. Yes. 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 And Sandrina does not have to feel as if there's any competition going on. No threats. By the way, I met a lady once. She, 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 I won't tell you where I met her. Young woman. And she, she would come to church looking miserable. Very miserable. One day she couldn't keep it any longer. She called her sister. And she said, I want to talk to somebody because my cup full and I can't manage. And so the sister called me and we both went outside and we had a conversation. Brethren, she said, I have a man that I need to leave. I said, oh my goodness. I'm thinking no abuse. I'm thinking abandonment. I'm thinking all kinds of things. And she said, listen, this man doesn't want me to work. So I'm thinking, okay. Now every woman wants to be independent. So I kind of thinking, maybe she has a point there. He doesn't want me to work. So I said, okay, but you want to work. Isn't that so? Yes, I want to work. Let me run this story quickly. She said, I said to her, um, why do you want to work? She says, I like to throw my partner. You know, many women here, life has become better because of the partner thing there. Not true. I want to throw my partner. I, I want to keep it going because at the end of the year, I can buy a break front, a dress up, you know, yes, fix up the place kind of a thing. So I said, okay, that sounds reasonable. And we began to question her. And I said to her, why do you think he doesn't want you to, to be um, employed? She said, really, I am usually self-employed. I buy things and I sell them. I have a little stall. And she said, you know, it's because my friends come and trust out the things then. And it take, takes them a long time before they bring the money in. So I said, okay, that's not a good business. And you don't seem to be a good business person. Maybe your husband is telling you something. Because if every time, and I said, by the way, who, who buys the load for you? She said, the husband. No, Bridget, on a, a serious note. If every time the man buy the load and give her, she give it to her, to Sandra, Jane, and so forth. It, it, who is it hurting? The man. So I said to her, okay, so who pays the bills? Him. With attitude too. I said, who buy your clothes? Him. So I said, who, who send the children to school? Like she said to me, said, what kind of question are you asking me? So I said to her, like, when you go to the supermarket, what, what, is the, what is the situation? She said, me just pick up. <laughs> okay. I said, like, when you go to the, the clothing store, what do you do? She said, we just pick up. <laughs> me said, my girl, not tell nobody else but your husband. Remember me tell you. Because... Miss safely married, and the lady you're talking to safely married. We're not going anywhere else, but remember me tell us, not tell nobody, nobody else, not tell any other woman. What a man. Can you imagine? She wants to sit on a street side in my mind to gossip because she's giving away the goods. She's giving away her time. She's not putting anything towards. It. And by the way, I asked her, so how do you still pay? your partner even though you are not uh, making anything she said yes <laughs> somebody said how oh, you pay the partner him I said, okay. let me tell you something many of us as women could spend less time on the phone <clears throat> many of us could spend less time at the fence you know how much put, put, put burn because of fence you know how much <laughs> stove mess up pot boil over because of gossip on the phone and uh, some people don't like to hear me talking i'm a traditional person i will 
believe in the old school. Yes, and gentlemen, same goes for the men. Me love when the door open for me, yes. And I'll say thank you. And ladies, learn to say thanks. They will stop it. What that for me can't open the door myself. I have a hand to know. You get some money, then I want this. What is this do? You're lucky. I I'm so sorry. Some don't get anything. And from the day they get pregnant, they don't know where him turn. Amen. Ask me because I have taught many students at school who don't want to hear about Father's Day because they hate their father, whom they've never met. Serious meds. Um, serious thing I'm telling you. It says here, a husband and a wife may disagree on many things, but they must absolutely agree on this to never give up. Are we together? Yes. For you know that makeup is sweeter than breakup. <laughs> okay, you just have to have the breakup to understand the makeup. Um, we are not perfect people and we're not living in a perfect world. Teeth and tongue we meet. We will not agree on everything because my mother raised me differently from his mother. And then there are some things that will shock me, but over time we get to what? Accept that is so people do things in Senti. <laughs> and eventually he'll realize that that's so we do things in Westmoreland. And if I annoy him enough, as a Christian, I must realize that him don't like it. I must stop it. Amen? And eventually he will realize that I really can't stand it. And he must stop it. So we meet each other where? Halfway. Not true? Yes. Compromise makes a difference. Many marriages would be better if the husband and wife were clearly understood. Sorry. Many marriages would be better if the husband and wife clearly understood that they are on the same side. Are we together? Yes. There is a song that I will not. I don't know the word, so thank God. But it's a, reg, it's a, it's a dance hall song. The young people might know it. It tells, it's a female singing the song. And she looks, in the song, she looks across the fence. And she sees this good, good couple. Decent people them, living well. And in her mind, that woman is not doing everything she needs to do for that man. And if she were to get the man, she will show the wife how things are to go. And then one day, after much pursual, she gets the gentleman. And then the song changes, the lyrics change, and she said, take him back. Hello? A spouse without a fault is a dangerous observer. <laughs> A spouse without a fault is a dangerous observer because if everything that goes wrong in the relationship is the other person, something is wrong. Something is wrong. Isn't that so? And so together we fix it because I have my fault. I brought it into the relationship and he accepts that he has some faults that he has brought into the relationship and through marriage, we better ourselves for the kingdom. You know that is diamond rubs diamond to make diamond look like diamond. Is one of the hardest rocks ever. So I don't know. No normal rubbing that. Huh? At the end of the day, there will be scars. But it's our trophy to the kingdom. Amen? Amen. For we must be patient through tribulations. There are some things we talk that we don't align to marriage. We talk about the Christian walk in that way, but not marriage. Because we talk about what? Climbing up the rough side of the mountain. But we don't see marriage as a mountain to be climbed. And I tell you something, nobody never, no one has ever climbed a smooth mountain. If you found one, tell me. It's easier to climb a rough mountain. And so we understand that each party has some flaws. Us. And as I build you, some of my rough edges are removed. And as you, and vice versa, because <laughs> I might just forget. I introduced to you 
quickly a couple from the Bible. Don't know if you've ever heard of them, but certainly our, our minister has. Aquila and Priscilla. A lovely couple who lived in a time when there was great persecution, religious persecution, and the church was in their home. Now, many of you enjoy all, all the, and I must say your offerings are going to good use. This is a place and a normal. I see the instruments, the uh, investment in this uh, camera and tripod. I see the ambience, the beautiful edifice you have here. Your offerings are going to good use. Aquila and Priscilla didn't have that. They had to hide in their home and slip in Christians, maybe through the back door, to have worship. The conveniences that you enjoy. And some of us criticize certain things. And I don't know what is going on. I haven't spoken to anyone. So if I've said anything inappropriate, it's not intended. And so Aquila and Priscilla in Acts 18, 1 to 3, are spoken of very highly. And we know that Acts was written by Dr. Luke. Yes? After these things, he left Athens. And they are speaking, he's speaking of Luke, of Paul, pardon me. Luke speaks of Paul's journey because he was a great missionary. After these things, he left Athens and went to Corinth. And he found a Jew named Aquila, that's the husband, a native of Pontus, having recently come, to, come from Italy with his dear wife Priscilla. Because Claudius had commanded all the Jews to leave Rome, he came to them, and because he was of the same trade, he stayed with them, and they were working for the trade. They were tent makers. So Paul, Aquila, and Priscilla were tent makers. It doesn't mean that, that there was the only thing they did, because we know that Paul was great in terms of the letters of the law. So in our day, we might call Paul a lawyer. Yes, a Jewish lawyer. But he, he had learned a trade. And by the way, let me use this opportunity to say, men, learn to work your way around the house. Knock up two cabinet. Learn to fix. My husband did a, 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 a tiling course recently. He's a, in the business world. Yes, but he learned to do like a tiling. He had not too good for you to do tiling. Amen. Yes, and he speaks fondly of his days in St. Elizabeth where he raised sheep and do little melon farming and skellion and thyme and so. Getting our feet, our hands dirty and our feet dirty is not a disgrace. Christ bowed low to wash the feet of his disciples to show that what? He um, wants us to humble ourselves. Amen? But as tent makers... They learned the art of making money for the home. Now, it is not easy working with one's wife or one's husband. So it means that there was a relationship between their trade and their ministry. Amen? In many cases, those people were nomadic. So the tents were a little place of worship, a little home, a little something. Yes? A place where they rested for a bit. So they made money from this. And... Paul, uh, Luke actually goes on to say in verses 24 and 20, um, 26, now a Jew named Apollos and Alexandria, an Alexandrian, pardon me, by birth, an eloquent man came to Ephesus and he was mighty in the scriptures. This man had been instructed in the way of the Lord and being fervent in the spirit, he was speaking and teaching accurately the things concerning Jesus, being acquainted only with the baptism of John. And he began to speak, and he spoke boldly in the synagogue. But when Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him aside. Now, these were ministers of the word. Isn't that so? They were students of the word and teachers of the word. Now, why did they take him aside? they realized that there was a new dispensation and they needed to talk about Jesus Christ and him crucified. Not about John per se. Yes, we want to big up John, the great um, way maker. He led the way, paved the way for Jesus Christ. But we must talk 
about Jesus Christ, who brought grace and salvation. Amen? Amen. And they took him aside and taught him. And he received it with thanks. A lot of men don't like to take instructions, you know. Apollos received it with thanksgiving. But what I liked about it, as I'm seeing with you and Mrs. Brown, partners in ministry. And so it builds up the man as he stands before God's people each time he preaches. She, I didn't know that you are good at the technical stuff, Mrs. Brown. I know you to be a Spanish guru. Yes, but I didn't know. So in his ministry, there needs to be something new. As with the presentation on, on, on social media and so forth. And he sits back and gives wings to his wife to glide and to soar and to take to new. And that is why relationships work. It's not all about Rev. I mean, it's, it's good. They're doing a good job. Hmm? He works hard, but he's giving his wife the latitude to grow. Amen. Forming her own ministry, doing her own thing. And I saw that she sings too. You went up there. Right, sis? So she's a multifaceted woman. Maybe when he met her, she was not doing all these things. Did you know about the computer when you met him? Okay, okay. You see what I'm saying? So, so we, we give each other. And so also, she gives him. So are we seeing where our men can find room to grow? Is there more beyond? See our young musician. And they could be out there in the dance hall playing. Isn't that so? Proper music, they all, almost had, they said, run and do what I almost run around the building. Maybe if I weren't in this pair of shoes, I would be around. My students would take my picture and put me on TikTok. <laughs> this is a fellowship that grooms our young men. Mothers, bring your sons to God. Let them be groomed in the fellowship that is here. Okay? Bring them. Fathers, bring it. Don't tell the pastor. I'm baptized. I'm yet. I'm young. Young pastor. I'm not ready yet. Not ready yet. And then what happened later on? You cannot bring him in. You cannot bring him in. You come and you say, Pastor, pray for the boy. You remember the same one day? Pray for him, Pastor. He made my heart bleed. Not true. The time pastor now said, but sis, I called you when he was 10. And you told me that it was too early. What is the situation? Or the first time pastor see him coming is in the box. In the box. And the grieving mother said, boy, if me didn't know me, bring him to Jesus. Coupon John. Hmm? And she's at the grave saying, me regret every day that me never carry him to the Lord. Let the Lord groom them. For manhood. And groom your daughters for womanhood. Bring them to Jesus. And the church, I don't know, sometimes I wonder. What will our girls um, do when they are ready to get married? Because there are few men in the church. And among the few are few committed men. Fewer com committed men. Hmm? Make you anxious, Rev. Who will take up my daughter? And I tell my children already, you know, I'll be looking for this. Book. I'll, I'll be from India. You know the Indians from East India and the, from Saudi Arabia, those folks? Yes. I'll be selecting. Yes, man. Premarital arrangements because nowadays I don't know if everybody who wears a trouser is or everybody who wears a dress is, you know, plus other things. Yeah. Yes, my good, good daughter getting some good licks. Yes. And by the way, raise your children to cook. Both of them. Both of them. Raise them to cook. Yes, raise them. Let your boy, if he's on his own at university, he will not have to go find a girl live within the dorm. The good up, good up Christian boy that leave your house can't put in on anything more than an egg to boil. Every day, boil egg and bread. Dry crackers and boil egg. Boil egg in all its form. No. Yes? And if the lady walks out on him, he can say bye-bye. He can press the trousers. Hello? 
now. He can sweep the house. Yes. Uh, uh, the girl won't be like the lady who said when the husband said, dear, could you fix me a little fish tea? She said, you want condensed milk in it or you want whatever. Hello. Serious matters. I tell you, we need to have old time sinting come back where we are raised. It's not the TV raising the people, the children. It's real people with real lessons to be taught. I heard the young people expressing their sentiments to their fathers who spent time with them. And it did not seem as if it was a performance. It seemed natural. It seemed real. And there are many others who would have come on if they had known to talk of other men who, who really have made an impact in their children's lives. You know, I met a few taxi drivers and a few of them have said to me, teach a member, my daughter, send him go to teacher's college in a miss. And I'll know, Franny left the yard and go, only thing he said is, daddy, me need more money. Daddy, me need, and Franny left teacher's college, me not bless me eye. Now your father, every day, in a taxi, back and forth. I guess it look easier money I make. It's not easy, brethren. Sit in one place, trying to meds out the money. This is for light. This is for water. This is for this. This is for that. Can you imagine? And you walk out on your father. You know that today there are many fathers who have fathered children. Not just fathered, but parented them. And they are hungry. Lonely, distressed, sick, and with no other neighbors have to look after him. Going to a hospital, hospitalized, and nobody to, uh, to come for him when he has been discharged. What a shame. The scripture says what? Honor thy father and thy mother. Yes? And I'm saying we learn it through what? Through example. We must be careful what we teach our ch children because they may never um, treat us well when we're old. Yes? And so we move on quickly by mentioning Romans 16, 3 and 4. It says here, greet Priscilla. This is Paul now speaking. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ. It's like, it's like a commendation. It's like saying this great missionary man of God is looking back in time. So he has written a letter to the Romans, to the people, the brethren in Rome that he called Romans. And he's saying to them, as long as I live, and this has been how many years, thousands of years since this has been written, remembering this great, this great couple, who have for my life, he Paul says in verse 4, that, that's Romans 16 verse 4, laid down their necks unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. What a couple. Working out the, the, the tent making, deciding what materials to use, determining how much to spend, determining how much to make determining how, to, how much to charge and also setting up the place. I can imagine Priscilla putting a little bouquet here. The brethren are coming. It's almost 10 o'clock. Decorating with the balloons, making sure there's proper ventilation with the beautiful natural decor so that when the brethren come, there is not only the, the uh, formal worship, but the appreciation of God's blessings to mankind. Amen? And so Paul acknowledges that a so couple for behave when they come to Christ. Stay together and work together. Amen? You know, I know of couples where the husband brings the wife in and then him leave. Are you hearing me? The husband brings the wife to church and then he slips out and vice versa. And sometimes the wife is tearful and she's saying, I him bring me come to God, you know. And look, then gone. And because he's gone, the children follow their minds 
are all over the place. Sometimes at church, that's when they are young. Sometimes at home with daddy or mommy. And eventually they choose their own path. They don't care. And they will tell you, but daddy, are you me? I'm following. You never used to go to church. Then he comes back when he's what? Very old. He can't see. He can't hear. And virtually, Virgin, I'm so sorry to say, are very little use to the church. Very little use. You have to lift him. The deacons have to lift him into the pool. And the children don't have a relationship with him. Never call him dad. Never call him dad. I must also big up some step fathers oh my goodness why well, you have some real good stepfathers who have stood in the gap for these children i just want to share a few more quotes a successful marriage isn't the union of two perfect people it's that of two imperfect people who have learned the value of forgiveness and grace you remember your last prayer? Think about last night. When you were praying, oh, Holy Father, thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you, Lord, for giving me grace. Thank you, Lord. I, I, I would say to us, the same way we expect grace from God, we must grant grace to our spouse. Amen? For he who cannot forgive will not be forgiven. And, and please note that the Bible does not tell us that he who has wronged someone must go and make peace alone. The Bible says, if someone has wronged you, <laughs> go. go. Remember now, you are the victim, you know. You are the victim. But for the what? Salvation of your brother. For the salvation of your husband. Go and make peace. Some of us say, me not chat to him because of him wrong give he wronged me but god is saying no go and make peace and listen it is found in the story of the 99 sheep where god runs after that one not the one running after god that one has wronged god but god is going and he's saying to us go and find your husband go and find the person doesn't have to be far you know because he also spoke of the lost coin where was the coin lost in the house and we know brethren you take the broom and under the bed we sweep every corner every crevice searching and searching because the coin is valuable so also we should see our spouses as a valuable the king along me i don't never go after him anyway i'm going to no, no, no. He is valuable to God. He's a son of God. So also the wife. She is a daughter of God, valuable in his sight. And in as much as you wish, Papa. That's Papa. <laughs> Hi, Papa. I just recognize you. Good to see you. As much as we recognize the value of the fallen strain danger out there and many of us some Sundays rev or in the week we go far and wide giving out tracks and stuff and or in our home we have people to win there are persons to be won right at home remember when the Lord comes he'll ask us for the little flock he gave us are we together the ministry of the gospel must be first in the home and, and by the way the ministry of the gospel should not be um alaka uno can come to God no want uno that should not be the word because we cannot fix up ourselves to come to Christ. We go to Christ as we are for him to fix us up. Isn't that so? So that the one who thinks she or he has been fixed up needs some fixing up. Because any true Christian recognizes his or her, or her state of fallenness continually and we are living in source of grace. It is not so because we know that we are not saved by works but by grace only through faith in jesus christ no man sure are you 
carrying me. We are saved by grace through faith. Amen? Grace is what does it. The greatest marriages are built on teamwork. And they say teamwork makes the dream work. Yes, the greatest marriages are, and guess what? Many workplaces get it right because they have many seminars and workshops on teamwork, collaboration, synergy, and some big words like those. But in the home, me do my own thing and him I do the same thing. Huh? So if, if, if the corporate world is getting it right, what are the child of God? What are the, is it, some of us, are, we are the ones who set up the workshops too, you know. Some of us are investing in the workshops. But that workshop is not working at home. We, 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 the values are left at work. And we go home with our bitter, angry selves to create bitterness and stress at home. That should not be it. In fact, a mutual respect is expected of us. A healthy dose of admiration. No, me not think so. Mr. Smith. Michael should have said to me this morning, you look very nice, darling. And my husband didn't say it. Not true. What, a bread, uh, uh. Don't you think my husband should tell me that I look nice? Even if nobody else don't think so? Or him said to me, said, dear, change the, 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 the dress. Not true. It's it not, it too tight. It's it not set so right. Isn't that so? Oh, okay. Uh, so we admire each other. Uh, and he whispers sweet nothings in my ears. Is that so? The, you know, a lot of little kids at school are whispering sweet nothings. And that is why they get themselves in trouble. And that is why some marriages don't work because who whispering the sweet nothing is not who I'm married to. Why well, Miss Brown, you look good enough. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. I hear that. Huh? So as me jump in the car going back home, me say, you know, say, Tom, Dick and Harry told me that me look good. I never tell me something look good this morning. I me don't like it. I don't like it. Huh? Respect. A healthy dose of respect, admiration, and a never-ending portion or portion of love. And, and love, you know, there are some people who, who, who put love only in the category of sex. When my husband does the puddings now, sir, may I tell you, man, if he drop on me toe, me lick it too. Remember me tell you. That is 26 years. Uh, wait, how old is it? Okay. About 24 years ago, since he started making puddings, and he has moved from corn pone to potato pudding. Nicer than you can ever imagine. Yes. And if there's a Sunday when I don't want to lift a finger, remember, you know, that my rice and peas and chicken is sure. I'm not dropping any word for anybody. No, I'm just telling about my husband. And let me tell you, if your husband is good at something else, big up yourself. Big up yourself. I'm not forcing the men to go around stove and burn down the house. If, if, yes, fine. Be good at what you're good at. Be excellent at what you're excellent at, but be excellent at something. Yeah. Are, are we getting it right? Yeah. Yes, man. Be excellent at something. Make sure you admire you. Make sure you know she will want to come home. And ladies, let me tell you something I learned. You know, there are some ways we have changed as women. We have baby and we change. Not true. Some of us get something around the waist. And some get some things in the abdomen. We were 110 pounds when we got married, but we're not 110 pounds since we get married. And the three pitney them give a whole heap of other weight. Not true. But fix up yourself. Be your husband's greatest admirer. And he must admire you greatly because you put yourself together. Are we together? Because him eyes not blind. Hello, he are not blind. He can see, fix up yourself. Look good, smell, look good, look good, look good. I won't go to this smell, <laughs> look good. Look good, you understand what I'm saying? Good, let me tell you something. I remember when I had my son, I decided, 
Sorry that I was going to cut off my head. Cut off everything, sir. Everything off my head. I never asked my husband any question. Did you, I, I, I was acting as if I was my own woman. Cut off my hair. I feel good about myself. I cut off my hair. I never admire it. I, I never, I never like it. I did it one more time when my daughter was born. I cut off of the hair again. In my mind, this time, everybody, I go natural, so I was going to go natural. And Nick Hen rode ahead. And he came in and he said, no, dear. No, dear. No. No, dear. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I didn't. Listen, there are some of us who say, well, off in my head. I'm going to do it. I want to do it. No. I thought of my husband. Who would I want to admire me but my husband? Not true. Yes. And so all my girlfriends were cutting off their hair and going natural. It looked good upon them and their husband liked it and that's fine. I'm not married to anybody else but Mr. Desmond. So I grow back the hair and he is pleased. Try to please your husband. Okay, I heard two yeses. Try to please. Your, listen, listen, listen. Listen with your eyes, your ears, your nose, everything. Listen. Because sometimes there are some things that we don't hear, but we observe. Isn't that so? And there are some things our spouses don't want to tell us because if they tell us, we're not going to like to hear it. So if we feel it and we're experiencing the displeasure, then we respond. Isn't that so, brethren? And vice versa. Isn't that so? It come in certain time of, you, you know, my grandmother, when, when when we were small, my country area there, you know, people used to pay attention to the home decor. We talk about the church, home decor. House be clean, bed for me. <laughs> Not true. Yes, man, pot for shine. Okay, um, there's some of us don't know about shine pot. Brethren, when your husband, you know, um, the virtuous woman was virtuous because there was a mutual relationship. The man worked the money, brought it in, and she invested it. She brought, she bought flax. She went to the, to the wharf, and she invested in things coming in off the ships. She brought them in. Her husband was, they said the man walked proudly in the community with his head up in the air. The men admired him because he had a virtuous woman but he was investing in her and she was investing in him are we together sometimes we talk about the virtuous woman as if it's she alone she was married and in those days women were not given the privilege so much of working but she couldn't she bought land with the money you know women save very well sometimes when the man money finishes, he said dear you know have anything you can't let me let me something, man. You have something tucked away. And she said, I mean, I have much enough, but still want three grand here. And you say, I have more than that, man. All right, see, 10 grand here. And you say, oh, whoa. go look up with high. And man. she said, all right, see, 20 here. So we must work together. My grandmother's house, they used to open it from the front. Anybody remember the entire house? Eh? The front door was aligned to the back door. So you look from the front. And you can see straight through to the shine from early morning. And everybody passing that red oak. Mercy. Stand up. Yes. Clean. And before 12 o'clock Sunday, pot come off a stove. Coconut grates. Everything put in a pot. Not true. Okay. And persons enjoyed their relationship because in those days many of them didn't have electric light so part of the wash i'm turned on uh, everybody foot wash <laughs> oh lord have mercy you are with me let's look for the good old days when a happy marriage was a union for good forgivers amen i close with this thought or story uh, they say marriage have teeth. Yeah, you know, and they say if no teeth, no in them by dentures, give the marriage. I heard of a story, and, and it was told by a gentleman on the radio. He said, Sir, me not married to nobody who have teeth. No, me not 
married to anybody with teeth. Remember me tell you, because me have to buy the teeth. So the gentleman said, what do you mean? Well, any day in my shop, me take back my teeth. Any day. But on a more positive side, a couple was seen. This is an elderly couple now. And they were at a restaurant. They may have been in their 80s at a restaurant. And they were, they were not very strong, not very able-bodied, but they were eating. And there was a young man sitting at another table and he was just admiring the couple. He was saying, oh my goodness, I wonder what I'll be like when I'm 80. You know, oh, look at them. But then he, he observed something that, that bothered him. The, the, uh, the lady was eating, but the man was not. And he said, no, mm -mm 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 -mm. the two of them are at the restaurant. They have two different plates of food. But the lady was eating. So as he ate and ate and ate, she, he went over. He said, um, miss, I, I don't know. It's not my business. It's not my place. I'm not even comfortable saying this. But why aren't you allowing your husband to eat? He said, well, you know, I'm the dentures mash up. <laughs> So because I'm a good gentleman, I'm letting her use my dentures now. Eat off the food. And when she finished, me have mine. A marriage for eternity. An everlasting bond. Forever together. Not the neighbors coming between. Not the in-laws coming between. Only Christ in the vessel. And we smile at the storm. And we know that he is the what? Peacemaker. And he will say every, every time things, every little corruption in the marriage, he'll say, peace, be still. God bless you. Well, I'd like to inform you that she will return. And so on behalf of all officers and members and our brothers and sisters of the Burn Savannah and the adjoining communities represented here this morning, I'd like to express our profound thanks to you, Mrs. Brown, for the encouragement, for the admonition, and for the words that you have given us, solid words. I am glad that you spoke to all the categories. Those who are married, those who are thinking of getting married, and those who are not even thinking yet, but they might just begin to think. Thanks to Sister Michael, who has responsibility for making sure that more sessions like this will happen both both in person and on zoom she has committed herself and there's something about her when she commit herself to something even if she's timid she's going to do it so i want to give thanks today that God has spoken. And I trust that we are all going home with a different mindset to make marriage work, to make life work. If life is going to work, everybody will have to work together to make it work. So my last word on that is, those who are married, it must be 
togetherness. Those who are not married and those of you who have your girlfriend, your boyfriend, and wondering if you ought to get married, I say to you that you ought to get married if you find the right person. As a matter of fact, you should not even start. <laughs> but it's not, every, it's not every start is going to continue to the end, right? But I encourage you, I encourage you, think about it. If you love the woman enough and if she really is that kind of person that you're looking for, make the man, make the woman to be proud of you, a wife or a husband. May the Lord bless us and lift our spirit as we continue to hear. We look forward to the time when you will come back, Miss, Mrs. Brown, and more people will come. So you will have to come with more. God bless you richly. There are, there are two things to be done before we leave this church today. And I'm going to be putting off one. Because the men who are to be brought into the church must give their testimony before we receive them as members of the church. So since the occasion of next week will be a little different, I am going to give them a one more week to ask God exactly what they will say. Because they are always saying, but this is going to be a time for them to say. Right? So you will be here right Right at this altar next week where I will receive you as bona fide members of the church, but you will testify before. Please remember that, brothers, for next week's Sunday, the Lord tarries. There are babies that we have to christen, but I am doing it different this morning because COVID seem not to want to leave us. And I am going to follow the restrictions, right? Although uh, the, the restrictions are somewhat, but they have said to us, be wise in what you do. So what we're going to do, we're not going to allow everybody to come up here. We're going to only allow father and mother of these children to take your children and we're going to ask one to stand there, one to stand there, and one to stand there. Then I will be inviting all family members, godparents, and everybody else to stand in the congregation when it's time to pray. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. And this is going to take a few minutes. When he cometh, when he Come to make up his jewels, all his jewels, precious jewels, his love and father and mother. Will you come forward? Like the stars of the morning, his bright crown. Little children, little children, who love their Redeemer, all the blue ones, all the good ones, His love and His hope, like the stars of the brought children to Jesus that he might touch them. The, the disciples sought to rebuke the children that were brought to Jesus. But Jesus said to them, don't run the children. 
let them come to me, for they are of the kingdom of heaven. Jesus took the children that were brought in his arm and he, he blessed them. Beloved fathers and mothers and, and God parents, please stand in the congregation and parents. You have brought your children whom God has given you to be dedicated to God and to his service. By the act of bringing your children, you are signifying your faith in the Christian religion and your desire that your children may live a godly life now and in the life to come in order that the end for which you have brought them may be accomplished it will be your responsibility as parents and guardian to watch over these children that they be not led astray to direct their mind to the holy scripture which expresses the will and authority of god it will be your responsibility as parents and guardian to restrain them from evil associate, evil people, and bad habit. And as much as light in you to bring up your children in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord, you will direct their feet to the holy sanctuary. And remember, your children, whether you are in America, in Canada, Africa, India, or wherever else there is, you cannot tell me that they can't go to church. They can, but they can be taken. And therefore, like Hannah, I ask you not only to bring your children for dedication, but see to it that your children are brought back very often to the church where they can be further nurtured with the word of God and they can grow in the likeness of God. Parents, young man, young Young man, young man, a funeral picnic. Member said, a uno go for them. You see that the pretty picnic there? A uno go for them. Therefore, Jehovah God hold you responsible for them. Not only now, but until they reach the age of accountability where they can differentiate right from wrong. And even at that age, you must set example for them. Mother, I know you are always most time the burn bearer. Man, take care of your picnic. <laughs> you hear me? Make them talk like you see the boy and Emma, others who talk for yourself? Yeah, man. Be there for your children. Be there for them. If you support them, they will support you. Stand up for what is right. Stand up for what is right. Begin to train them right. Teach them right. And live right before them. They will not depart from the good you have done. God bless you.
Superintendent of Sunday School, Mr. Sterling, will make sure that you have the certificate of dedication. God bless you. All right, now you are leaving church. And uh, fathers, last time the women were here, you blessed them. And as you go from church today, the mothers and daughters want to bless you. So I want to take myself out of the way. You won't come back to church this evening, right? You will go home and you will either stay at home and have a good time with the family or you take them go where you go, right? But this evening or today is the man's day or the husband's day, you hear? And a field day, and a picnic day, you understand? It's 
husband there. Jennifer, you hear that? A female. You hold the affimi. Brother, brother, brother Smack, you know, you know, agree with me. How about you, man? If a flowers are true, me a true plant. Anything I have, me I get it. All right, this is my day. So, services will continue each weekday as is set. Join prayer meeting on Wednesday evening. It will be a special service when we will talk about money. Lord, mo money. The Mayless family have requested that their child be funeral be hosted here. And according to the agreement of the church, the funeral will be hosted on Saturday, the 25th of June at 11 o'clock. That is Nathan's funeral. All men are invited to a meeting. If you can't come in person, come on Zoom. 6.30. That is before the special time on Wednesday evening. Money matters. So all men who, can, who don't want Zoom, pass on one for seal. It's going to take half an hour. Please, I beg you to Come, if you cannot go on Zoom, meet me in person here. Again, I want to call Mrs. Brown, and she is going to be uh, making sure that the men are feeling good. Boy, may I tell you something, you know, the best people in the world are the women, you know, men. Amen. Amen, ladies. You just look for me and I laugh, not you. The best people in the world are men. Not true. Amen. Not true. Amen. Amen. Amen, ladies. Amen. Men, you are so, so, so special. God made you special. And we salute you today. And right now, we're going to ask all the fathers who are in the space. You're going to stand. All the fathers, you're going to stand at this time. I'm going to ask Sister Ophelia, Sister Lynette. They're going to lead out and they're going to sing for you. God made you very special. Just before they come, I'm going to ask Sister Joan. Sister Joan, Madam Secretary, I think I, yes, Sister Joan, please come. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Reverend Loinel, if you could come, please. Okay, so on behalf of the church board and members, it is my great pleasure to present to our father. We could not want a better father than the one that we have. He is always there for us. I know at times he may, may be in his bed and can't sleep because he's worrying about his children. Um, I know how much he loves us. I was feeling down one Sunday I came to church and I was not feeling myself. And as a good father, when I went home, I got a phone call. Sister Joan, I didn't like how you look today. You're all right. And this is the kind of father that we have here. And I know that he has extended the same sentiments to all his children, not just me. And Pastor, I just want you to know that we love you. We appreciate you. And there is no other like you. Happy Father's Day.
Well, after 41 years together, that's July 11th, what else can there be? And I just want to thank God today for my own husband, who has certainly stood in the gap. I no longer have a father, earthly father that is, and he has really been playing that role, not just of a husband. Okay, and let me just, before the ladies sing, this morning, the first thing he saw on his phone was this. I look at you and I pray God never lets me take your love for granted. I pray he helps me show you how truly special you are to him and to me as a father, a man of God, and a husband. I pray you know how wonderful you've been, how valuable you are, and how deeply you will be appreciated every day of my life. I love you always, darling. Wow. Happy Father's Day. Wow. And that was from me to him, the first thing he saw. And right behind it, your life has blessed mine more than you'll ever know. Ladies, I'm gonna ask all the fathers in the house, we wanna tell you how special you are and just to give a token. God makes you special. All the fathers in the house. God made you so special for this. No other who's just like you. Special. right now we commit to you all the fathers who are standing and by extension we recognize those via zoom facebook youtube we pray a special blessing on every father every father present we pray, God, that you will continue to give them the strength and the vision and the sense of leadership that they ought to exhibit in their homes and wherever they are. Thank you, God, for these men that you have provided for us. Thank you for the protection, for the guidance, for the provisions that they have have been given to their wives, their spouses, and their children. We pray, Lord, that you will bless them in a very special way, a double portion on them. Continue to give them, Lord, the strength, open up doors of opportunities, Lord, that they will be able, Lord, to provide and be that God the example, be the priest for their families, Lord, that you have in your holy scriptures laid down for them, Lord, to really 
lead and to follow. So we thank you, God, for them. And we just pray, God, that for the rest of this day, they will feel extra special. And not just today, Lord, but every day of their lives. May yes. they not be taken for granted by the woman. But Lord, may we continue to shower down love. May we continue to stand by them. May we can continue to be that support for them as we allow them, Lord, to be the fathers and the men that they ought to be. Thank you, Lord, for every one of them. Crown them, Lord, with every blessing from above. And we thank you, Lord, for the anointing that you're going to be placing upon their lives. We're going to see men in this church, Lord, rise up. We're going to yes, see yes. men taking their stand. Hallelujah. We're going to see men leading the role in the name Amen. of Jesus. Yes. Father, we commit them to you. Yes, Lord. Now and forevermore. Awesome. And God's people say, Amen. 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 Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. As we go, I want you to remember Sister Janet, Sister Janet Williams. Her father has left her. I want you to remember her in your prayers. As Arthur has been a good uh, person and uh, he has passed on. Please remember Brother Bolin. He is not well had to rush to the doctor today. Please remember him in your prayer. I want to express thanks to the young men outside and uh, in the church who have come to just celebrate. This is their day. Some of them are fathers. Some of them are not fathers yet, but they are preparing to become fathers. We're glad that you have come and we look forward to see you more time again and again. May we all stand. Let us now invoke the blessings of God upon us. Please raise your right hand and let's pray together. Lord, bless us and keep us. Lord, make your face shine upon us and be gracious unto us. Lord, lift up the light of your countenance upon us and give us your peace, henceforth, now, and forevermore. Amen. I say to you, goodbye, and God richly bless.